Hey guys, today we're gonna learn about Spring Boot. We're gonna create a basic app, a Hello World app, and we're just gonna talk about how to get started with it and why you should take a look at it. So let's begin. And before we get too far, let me just remind you guys, I am doing a giveaway for 10,000 subscribers. I have this, um, this up right here, how to enter to get a free copy of my book. I'm giving five free copies away. If you haven't done this, you should check it out. You need to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment, and then there's a little link in the description below to subscribe to my email list so you can be updated and notified when I put these videos out. That really helps me out. So I hope you guys do that. All right, so back to Spring Boot. So I would highly recommend before you start, if you're brand new to this, is install an IDE, a development editor. Now, there's two in the Java world that are the most popular, and I would have to say is Eclipse and IntelliJ. And there's a few people using Vim, a few people using some other things, some other uh, development editors, IDs. But I would suggest you start with IntelliJ because it's really easy to get started. It has auto completion, it has syntax highlighting, everything you need. And so there's two versions, the, just the Ultimate Edition and the Community Edition. So if you're just starting out, just download the Community Edition. It's absolutely free. It'll have everything you need to get started with Spring and just Java development in general. And you can see here the pluses and checks. So if you're really hardcore and you're going to be doing stuff on Perforce or you have TypeScript integration, you want to do some database integration into it and maybe other version control systems. It has a little bit better integration for Spring Boot 2, but we, we don't need that for this tutorial and what we're trying to do. So I would say just download the Community Edition. It's good for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. So I'm not going to show you how to download it, but you just click the download button and it'll download it. And then you just click on it and follow the instructions and it'll install on your computer. So after you have the community installed, community version installed, I would look at Spring Initializer. So if you go, and I already have it open here, but if you go to start.spring.io, and if you can see that at the top, it's start.spring.io, it'll bring you to the Spring Initializer. And this is where you bootstrap your, app, bootstrap your application. So if you're quickly prototyping stuff, you're doing a code spike, you want to come in here, you can really quickly create a project. So it kind of gives you, it generates the Maven or Gradle project. You just select the drop down if you're not familiar with that there in java there's a lot of dependencies there's a lot of compiling into you have a lot of class files and you either usually compile it into like a jar file or some kind of um, bunch of dot class files and you may want to do some moving things around well these are tools that help you do that they're kind of like build tools so um, we're going to stick with maven um great is also really good you can actually, there's different ways to write Java applications. There's Kotlin, there's Groovy, there's just plain Java. So Kotlin's kind of in the new kid on the block. Uh, last couple years, it's gotten a little bit more popular. It's kind of a more of a functional way of writing Java. But we're going to stick with Java right now. And then you can pick the version. I would stick with 1.5.10 if you want to be a little bit more bleeding edge and there's some features you must have in Spring Boot, then you would choose one of these other ones and then you just kind of give it a group name uh, in Java you always have this com dot example you have this kind of dot notation here so we can do a program with Eric rest service and then you can put like the artifact name we can put just call it program well we we'll call it um, rest app doesn't really matter and we can switch to full version. You can search for the dependencies or you can kind of just select it. And, and when you click that little button at the link at the bottom, it gives you a lot more information. So we're going to use the rest repositories. And so these are just easy ways of adding dependencies into your Maven file. So that way, when you start, first start off the project, you don't have to manually add them all. And these are kind of just more common ways of creating apps. So if you're going to use Hibernate and then you have different types of databases you're going to connect to SQL, H2, if you want to just do a quick embedded support, uh, new SQL databases, Cloud Core, if you're doing like microservices, you might want to look at cloud routing. I'm not going to go into this in this video, but in the future, we're going to use a, a little bit more. Right now, all we're going to check mark is at the top, 
we're going to check mark rest repositories because we're going to create a really basic rest hello world app so once you've got that checked you just click on the generate project and that will download a zip file for you and then this zip file you just find on your directory you extract it to a folder somewhere so i went ahead and did that part so just to speed things up i have intellij right here i'm going to go to import project here i already have the directory s selected i just put it into called a directory called sample project i'm going to click ok there then it's going to ask me what the model was uh, it was maven we selected so we're going to choose maven here we're going to leave all the defaults here but you can change it if you like and then it's going to say do you want to import it, it looked at the maven file and said do you want to import this like we're good now if you've never used in IntelliJ before, you may have nothing here on this screen. So you need to click the little plus arrow and find where you have Java installed. So if you haven't installed Java, you might need to install the latest JDK, uh, use 1.8, just Google Java JDK 1.8. I think it'll just bring you to the Oracle site. And then you can just click yes, you accept their terms of services, and then you can download the JDK, you install it, and it'll put it, it defaults into this program files 86. If you're on a Mac, it's a little bit harder. I think it's in the system library folder. Uh, it's It should be there, but select it. You can put it all in there. Then click next and click finish. And it says, oh, it already says I have an idea folder because I probably at one point had one in here, but normally it isn't this, just click yes. But I believe it's empty other than that. So it'll start working right when you get in here you're gonna have this empty project so there's a source folder on the left hand corner it's hard to see maybe uh, go to main then you're always gonna have in these spring boots it's always gonna be the same directory structure it's gonna have this source at the top and then main and then Java and then you're gonna have the uh, what you put in for the group the com dot program dot basics dot basic app and so here it is so there's nothing in here it's just this is what comes out of the box spring boot application this is an, called an annotation so this kind of wire annotations in in spring are ways that kind of wire stuff up in the background so instead of writing a bunch of boilerplate code or or trying to configure everything we can use the annotations to kind of speed up our development process uh, maybe in future videos I'll, I'll deep dive into some annotations and what they do but for this purposes you can just notice this is like your main method this is where you start everything you can see this is just it's complaining about indentations yeah it just runs the spring application that runs so if you right click on this you see this little menu you can let me make see if I can make this bigger see here so I just right click on this so if you don't right click in the right place just make sure you're in this folder and you should already have one of the options should be run basic application.main so you should know that it's the main don't get confused if you try to run it from a different folder you may not have this make sure you go into the main and try to run it from there otherwise you're going to have to configure your run settings so just run and you can see at the bottom it's starting to bring up so you have the spring logo here and then it has a bunch of options and it basically loaded it up it actually since we chose that we we're using the rest uh, it actually loaded a web server for us so if we go back to our spring initializer here's our localhost 80 and this is actually out of the box default we didn't do anything but you can see it here and by the way I have a plugin to kind of make this this a little bit prettier but this is what you'll come back for come back in so we go back here uh, so let's create our rest service we'll make our hello world so we go new java class we're going to call it hello world and we'll make this big so you can see it and first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a rest controller so we can just put the ampersand, you can see here as auto completion, if we hit tab, it's gonna add the rest control annotation and it's gonna put the import in. So once again, if you're new to Java, this may not make sense, but you have to import in all your dependencies. This is our dependencies, this org framework annotation. So it puts it in there for us. This comes part of, if you look inside the palm XML file, you can see all these, 
these uh, this was all generated for us because he has the org spring framework boot uh, this dependency has the spring boot starter data rest starter test maven plugin so this all comes with us and this these are dependencies in our application that help put everything together so that has all the libraries we need so if we go back to our hello world now we can go ahead and let's create a we can do public string index and then we're just going to return a hello world and semicolon so this just tells us that we're using a public method it's going to return a type string we're going to call it index it's going to return a string called hello world and to make this all work correctly we're going to do our amper or at sign again and we can do it with um, instead of doing request controller we're going to do request mapping and then request mapping you can see it already put the annotation at the top we can then put in where we want the request mapping. And what this does, it's going to map when every time we go to the slash, it's going to run this string and it's going to return hello world. So let's see if that works. We're going to save it. And remember, anytime you make changes, you're going to have to stop or restart, stop and restart the Spring Boot server. So it's restarted. Let's go back to our application and we're going to refresh it and back to hello world. So, and hello world. So cool. You see it's working now we've created our hello world it's just that simple folks um thank you for watching if you guys have any questions leave a comment below if you haven't subscribed click that subscribe button and if you really like it click that plus button so you'll let me know next time i make a video i'm going to definitely do a lot more spring videos but i just wanted to start off with something really simple because then you can kind of feel like you're actually making something working and i think that's a good way to start so thanks for watching bye